South Asia. I'm sure you've heard this term being thrown around recently. What do you hope young kids, especially young kids of South Asian descent, get from watching this? A lot of South Asian youth, it's hard to figure out what makes you South Asian enough. Now please make a sequel to World War Z. Mindy here, yeah, she repping for South Asians. Hair love one for best in the... Band karo, haath jod ke main, main Modi saath e guzarish karta ho. In South Asia. South Asia. South Asia. South Asia. So much so that it is even replacing the word India to describe India outside of India in progressive circles. Because according to Wikipedia, Rabindranath Tagore is now a South Asian. The Hindu festival of Rakhi is also now South Asian. Rasgulla is South Asian. Okay, so by that logic, Sri Ram is also a god for all South Asians, right? Whoa, 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 whoa. Wow. Yeah, I didn't think so. So much so that even while discussing medieval India, it is called South Asia instead of India. Even Aurangzeb must have been like, did we pull a Chris Columbus and just start calling some random place India? In progressive American states like California, there is a systematic attempt to replace anything before 1947 India and call it South Asia. And I honestly have a problem with this classification. Now you may rightly ask, Sham, are you really that bored? Why are you dedicating an entire video to just two words? to basically what amounts to semantics. Honestly, instead of doing that, you could take up gardening. You could take up carpentry. You could become a film reviewer. Oh no, wait, hold on, I already do that. The point is that why I have a problem with India or the Indian subcontinent being now referred to as South Asia is because I have a few theories. Theory number one, the way the word South Asia is used when describing Pakistan, Bangladesh or India. Any positive aspects of India are labeled as South Asian. Any negative aspects of India are still laden on India and particularly its Hindu culture. Any positives from Pakistan are specifically Pakistani or Islamic and any negatives from Pakistan can be again laden on South Asia. So in short, it is a way for Pakistan and Bangladesh to wash their hands from any of their negative aspects and for India to bear the burden of all the negatives from the entire area. Case in point, sexual grooming gangs in the UK are referred to as South Asian in many news outlets. Despite the fact that a very tiny section of people in these gangs are of Indian descent and an even smaller section are Hindus. A vast majority of these men are Pakistani Muslims. So then why are we lumping this entire area to a crime that is being committed by people from just one country? Don't do that. Here's more proof. Anything positive coming out of Pakistan is not attributed to South Asia. It is always attributed to Pakistan. For example, the Omaiya Reservoir, which was developed by a Pakistani American American neurosurgeon, not a South Asian. Zain Malik, formerly of One Direction, is a Pakistani British musician, not a South Asian British musician. Abdus Salam, even though Pakistan doesn't even want to recognize the man, is listed as a Pakistani, not a South Asian. The instrument of Sagar Veena is mentioned as a Pakistani instrument, not a South Asian instrument. It's gotten so far that even the great ancient Indian University of Takshashila is now supposed to be in ancient Pakistan. Hold on a second. What the f is ancient Pakistan. It's like pointing out Native American ruins in a place where a McDonald's now stands and then putting these ruins in a museum saying that these were the Comanches of the ancient McDonald's. That's literally how absurd it is. Here's more proof. As I said, something that's negative associated to India is still India. It is not South Asian. For example, the caste system is not South Asian. It is specifically Indian. Even though caste discrimination exists among the Muslims of the Indian subcontinent, like the Ashraf caste and their discrimination of the Pasmanda castes. Even though intertribal hierarchies and discrimination exists within the Arab Muslims of the Arabian Peninsula. But social hierarchies and discrimination are always solely attributed to India and the Hindus. Here's another great example from pop culture. In this video, Bridgerton actress Charitra Chandran is talking about Indian representation and what it means to be a British Indian cast in a mainstream British series. The video is clearly the actress talking about an Indian achievement. However, the title of the video is South Asian representation. On the other hand, this video from Trevor Noah talking about Disney's Miss Marvel show is explicit about the milestone that has been achieved by a Pakistani Muslim superhero. Like how many stories can you say where you, where you go like, oh, who is this character? Okay, well, you know, here you have this girl who is born to immigrants from Pakistan yeah. and then she's like living in this different world and it's like, you, you, like, you, you, you're that, that, that's wild. Like Muslim superhero? Uh, Fully. 
Well, what happened to South Asia? Why was this not a South Asian achievement? So as you can clearly see, the word South Asia is being used in a very insidious manner to remove India from the equation. So the question arises, when did this classification start? Well, as all bad things that have happened to India in the last 200 years, it comes from the West. Stephen P. Cohen. माना जाता है कि उन्होंने शब्द की शुरुआत की और सबसे ज्यादा उन्होंने ही इसका उपयोग शुरू किया। Since then, it has been picked up by progressive universities and progressive governments in the West as well. Currently, schools in California are campaigning to change the name of ancient India to ancient South Asia. Now, the argument that people that support South Asia is that relating that entire area to India marginalizes other countries in the region. And even though I'm willing to understand the concerns of people that are saying that their countries are going to be marginalized, I still believe that Indians need to reject the term South Asia. Because if you think about it, Spanish-speaking countries in the American continent are still classified under Central and South America and called Latin America. Does that destroy their cultures? Does it kill the culture of Kuwait, UAE, Oman, Qatar, and Yemen because they're all considered to be part of the Arabian Peninsula. Is China ever called West East Asia? Is Greece ever called East South Europe? Is the UK ever referred to as the Northern European Islands? Does anyone from Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, and England refer to themselves as a North European Islander? Then why is it only the Indian subcontinent's name that needs to be changed to South Asia? Is it because all the countries in the Americas are Christian and all the countries in the Arabian Peninsula are Muslim? Is it because India is an old pagan thorn in Pakistan and Bangladesh's side? Is it because Pakistan and Bangladesh do not want to be associated in any way with a pagan culture? Another theory that I have is that for Pakistanis, using the term South Asia instead of Pakistan is a wonderful get out of jail free card. The word Pakistan still carries a lot of negative connotations, you know, because of all the pew pews and the boom booms. So using the word South Asia to describe Pakistan instead of using the word Pakistan is a lot more palatable. By using the term South Asia, they can actually share some of India's shine. For example, this video. South Asia is one of the most exciting emerging regions around the world. No, it's not. In this video, when they're talking about the success of South Asia, they're basically only talking about India. And they prove their point when they're talking about South Asia being the most sought after destination for foreign investments and the list literally just contains India. It's like saying Mary Jane was as crucial in defeating Thanos as Iron Man was. So, what's your superpower? Kicking. Oh, right, because none of us can kick. Hey, which one of you guys can kick? Hulk, stop being nice. Sorry. Many Pakistani restaurants outside of India literally need to call themselves Indian restaurants in order to be successful. What? What the fuck? Theory number three for me is that ultimately using the term South Asia to describe India and its surrounding areas makes this entire area just a whitewashed geographical entity completely removed of the civilizational, historical, and cultural context of the area. This is something that Islamic supremacists in Pakistan and Bangladesh have been trying to achieve for a very long time anyway, to wash themselves of any pagan association. Let me explain what I mean with an example. Takshashila University may broadly exist in this nebulous South Asian region, but at the same time, this university existed firmly in the cultural, spiritual milieu of the Indian civilization. Bhagwan Buddha may have been born in this nebulous South Asian region, but he was very much influenced by a part of and a product of the Indian civilization. And this term South Asia unfortunately is also supported by many upholders of secularism within India as well because it turns India into a blank slate for these people. They remove what India has always been and they can basically now add their own idea of India and what they would like India to be. This new South Asia will have a historical concepts of Aryans and Dravidians, where Hinduism and India never really existed before the British, where social hierarchies like caste existed only among the backward Hindus, where the uppity Aryans who are the oppressors of the Dravidians are using the backward religion of Hinduism to oppress minorities, where Islam and Christianity actually came and civilized the pagan natives. This way, India is basically erased from all positive context, but the corpse of India is kept in cold storage to load all the negative connotations upon it, like caste and the religious bigotry of the Hindus. But no matter how hard this coterie tries to paint the Indian civilization as South Asia, 
Indonesia. Whenever a racial attack on a person from this area happens, they're always abusing Indians, not South Asians. And as much as I hate to say it, those racists are right. This area of the world has always been India. In ancient Indian literature, this land has been described as the area between the oceans and the great mountains, which looks a little bit like this. Looking at the various Shakti peaks of the Indian civilization and looking at the various Mahajanpadas of ancient India gives you a very good idea of where this Indian civilization lies. This is how travelers, emissaries, and even invaders have described this area. Herodotus called this area India. Megasthenes wrote the Indica about the Indian subcontinent. Persian invaders called it Hind or Hindustan. Even brutal genocidal religious bigots like Aurangzeb called himself the emperor of Hind. The fact that we term the civilization of the Indian subcontinent as Indian does not mean that we identify this entire area with the modern day Republic of India. Geographically, sure, it may be a bunch of diverse countries, but culturally and civilizationally, this is not the South Asian culture, this is not South Asian civilization, it is without a shadow of a doubt the Indian civilization. And so I believe that the attempt to relabel the Indian subcontinent and the Indian civilization as South Asia is an insidious attempt to erase India. The same India that has been systematically and successfully destroyed in the Islamic countries bordering India. And I want to ask you, do you see a problem with using the word South Asia to describe the area of India and its neighboring countries? Are you fine with the word? Do you agree with me? Yes or no? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you like these English videos and if you'd like to see more English videos like this, let me know what to make the next video on in the comment section down below. Again, if you'd like to see more videos like this, I'd really appreciate your help on Patreon to help this channel grow bigger and more successful. So click on the Patreon link in the description down below. If you'd like to check out the latest Sham Sharma show merch, click on the merch show link in the description down below as well. Other than that, I will see you for the next episode. Until then, stay happy, stay healthy, and to all of you, a secular pronoun.